Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I wish I could tell you that there was a definitive turn in the score of the wrist dial, but there isn't. It keeps on swinging from minus 20s to plus 20s. Uh, we really needed to get it into the green or into the red to have any kind of sustainable big move. As we can see, uh, basically, it just keeps on uh, going uh, between, you know, sort of minus 25 and plus 28. Um, no change. We will probably get a, uh, a risk on move in the dailies and weeklies over the course of the next couple of weeks. But it's going to be very shallow. If you can see what's happening, basically, there is no trend in the risk assets. And I have no reason to believe that that is going to change anytime soon. And here we are on Friday. We broke through the middle line. And now that is going to be support. But if you can, as you can see, uh, new highs are unlikely to stick. And new lows will be very much supported at the previous level of 28.25, which is also the times 16 Blue Angel. So we are very much stuck between times 16 and times 17 Blue Angel. The, uh, the market is going to be continuously churning in this area until we get uh, some clarity. Uh, it is not likely that the, um, uh, we are going to get uh, some sectors uh, breaking out decisively. If we look at uh, energy, uh, you know, it's probably coming to a, uh, a, a bounce sell. Uh, here we have the telecoms, not really very inspiring, is it? We need a long time before these start leading again. Uh, XLU is basically giving up some gains and will be supported at the midline. Uh, and if we have a look at XLB, nothing very much to write home about. So, you know, XLK is now very close to the red line. It needs to stay up there for several days. And I, and I probably mean two or three weeks before this starts opening up and we can have a trend again, much like it happened here. If we continue looking at the others, XLF is the one which is now in a position to give us a little bit more uh, because that is the one that uh, has been the weakest and now if the Fed is on hold this and the yield curve steepens this one could give us a good 2-3% on the way up. Um, XLV I still don't like. I still think that every time it gets to the middle of the line uh, it's time to start bu start buying uh, put spread. If we enlarge, you know, the deviations, you can see how flat the line is getting. It's almost turning down. We do have the start of earning season, so people really aren't expecting that much. I would have thought the time 17 line, which is around the 30-30 area, is going to be very good resistance. I don't see the market sustaining new highs. And on the other hand, you know, time 16 is going to be a very, very good, uh, very, very good support. This is not uh, the environment where you can have sustained, uh, uh, sustained trend in volatility, simply because I think the market position is such that people are not optimistic and therefore have hedged, they've hedged with options. Uh, I don't see this market going substantially higher or lower anytime soon. Well, what is there to say about the short end of the bond market? It's getting to be an, at an interesting level where uh, call spreads in price and basically put spreads in yield are getting to be interesting. This 170 area is going to be a very interesting area for me, uh, fundamentally as well as technically. You can see the technical importance of it, but fundamentally it's also where the market starts saying uh, we're not going to get any cuts anytime soon from the Fed. And I think that is quite wrong. 
Um, I think the Fed will cut and they will cut a lot more over the course of the next six months. So I'm prepared to give it a go at this 170 area. Between 170 and this level here, 180, 181. So 170, 180 is a very good area to, uh, with very good risk reward for putting on longs in two year notes. Fives, well, what to say? I'm now absolutely convinced more than ever that we are in this kind of range. So on the downside, 117 on the upside 177 um, probably you can uh, you, you can restrict that by a few basis points either side but if we do see this 177 area wonderful level for put spreads uh, unlikely to be wrong uh, for a long long time the tens and TLT and long bonds and ultra longs are far less clear than the short end I think the danger, the big danger, is that we have a steepening yield curve and therefore I'm not going to play anything apart from twos and fives. The tens can easily get up to this level, uh, somewhere around the uh, 202, 203, but really they should stop around this 185 area. Uh, it's just not worth the additional uh, risk of playing in the longer end because the shorter end is far clearer. So I would leave those alone. Uh, the yield curve should be steepening. It makes sense as the Fed eases, the, the yield curve should steepen. Uh, to me, the tens and the thirties do not offer the clarity and the risk reward which is necessary to go and play in the longer end as opposed to staying in twos and fives. The Bund is approaching our interesting level, uh, minus 40 basis points, but you can see any, all of this area between minus 40 and minus 27 is really going to be uh, a key area. So at minus 40, I'm going to start doing uh, call spreads in the Bund, and at minus 27, I'm going to have an outright position on as well, should it get there simply because the risk reward is wonderful. You know that if you get certain, you know, uh, several closes above this line, then something is going on because you'll be busting all kinds of levels. To me, that is almost inconceivable, simply because uh, the, Bundes uh, the, uh, the ECB will be buying uh, assets at the rate of at least 20 billion a month in euros, and that is going to... Uh, uh, that is going to impact the shape of the yield curve a lot. The long end uh, just has no issuance. The ECB owns it about, you know, just about in, the, in its totality. And to me, breaks of this line are going to be very unlikely. Risk reward says anywhere in this range and start at minus 40, get long of buns. The yield differentials are at a very important juncture. You know, we caught this move from minus 245 down to minus 210 perfectly. This area here is a huge overhang. I don't think there is any reason to expect the market to start busting through it uh, unless the uh, US starts moving very wildly. And I am not expecting that because the fundamentals aren't there. I think we remain in an area between this low, which is around minus 235 and minus 210. So what I'm saying and what I'm thinking is that the uh, this whole period, while the interest rate differentials were supportive for the euro, now we stop being supportive for the euro and start being supportive for the dollar. And that should give... DXY some impetus on the upside. If it doesn't, then this you know, yield differentials obviously are not drivers as they have not been throughout. Uh, but I would have thought that uh, at some stage they have to become. Uh, as we go into year end, uh, I, I would have thought that fundamentally these interest rate differentials at such huge levels are going to have to be supported for DXY. Having said that, that interest rate differentials will start being supported for DXY and not the euro anymore. Well, 
all week the euro went up, but I think that was a function of sterling more than anything else. As you can see, it's still trading technically beautifully. We have this 110.60 and above that 111.08, and it's just not breaking it. It's staying within the Bollinger Bands beautifully, and these are contracting. I have no reason to believe that we will break 111.08 anytime soon. But if we do, we get a quick spurt up towards the 112 area where the 200 day moving average is. Something like happened here. But I think the story of the week uh, and of the next couple of weeks is going to be sterling, which I believe still has considerable upside. And here is the GBP story. If you look at it, I mean, we are hardly any higher than we were a couple of weeks ago, right? Yet, we, I believe we've received some fundamental news. I've re I believe we received the news that there will be a deal and the worst fears of, you know, of the market are definitely not going to be realized. In which case, we are probably in something like an A, B, C uh, uh, type of pattern. And that basically says that we are we have targets anywhere between 128 and 132 on the upside as you can see this area i believe will trade uh, this should keep uh, euro usd bid uh, but not as you know the uh, the the euro gbp should be under pressure i certainly think that sterling has been undervalued for quite some time and if the worst doesn't come to pass I think the market will very quickly, which and the technical position of the market is awful. I think people are still very short of sterling. Uh, we we sh should see this just under 132 area over the course of the next couple of weeks, while the Brexit talks uh, continue. I I have uh, no uh, no idea what happens longer term. But longer term, I think, you know, my thoughts are that this is going to be some kind of a left shoulder, this ahead, here is a right shoulder. And uh, at some stage, you know, I fully expect to see the 150 area where sterling was trading uh, just before the euro referendum. I, I am not one of those people that thinks that Brexit is going to be a disaster. I am one of those people who thinks that Brexit is actually going to be good for Britain. Uh, and at some stage, the currency will respond to Well, it. the cross currents of the pound certainly are influencing DXY. I, re I really wouldn't be surprised uh, if re we came back and retested this area just above the 200 day moving average around 97.52 simply because I think the strength in sterling, if I'm right, and it goes up to 132, drags up Euro USD, which impacts the DXY. But after that, I think into year end, we have another leg higher in DXY. From 132, sterling should calm down and come back into a range of 125, 132. Uh, that enables the interest rate differentials against the Euro that I showed you earlier to do their job and for people to get out of uh, the euro because I really don't see the point of owning it. As bonds and as the dollar uh, lose their momentum and impetus, as I've shown you earlier, gold does the same. Basically, gold is saying that it's still a uh, low interest rate, uh, strong dollar play. Um, it, it's, um, it's coming, it's coming back and really I would not be surprised now is 1457, which is such a, an important level, uh, gives way much as it did here kind of thing. And if we, you know, come back towards these levels around the 1416 area, uh, still longer term, I think a goodbye I think this kind of uh, pattern is supportive and I don't think the low interest rate environment and uh, the bond bid is going to go away anytime soon simply because I think the Fed is still in an easing mode uh, but uh, 
if the um, if the dollar goes stronger into year end as I uh, think it might it, it it's just not going to have a huge trend I think you know this is a weekly chart the longer it stays above 1457 the more bullish I get uh, but you know I think the 1457 to 1400 area is going to be where we will eventually break down to and then we go up towards year end. In SPX you must be uh, sick of listening to my levels and I'm pretty sick of watching the market trade within them. If you have a look at the monthly chart basically another complete non-entity of a month so far the levels it needs to hold which are these two moving averages and especially the center one and the 2864 it's holding you know that's all that can be said for it the longer we continue consolidating we've been here one two three four months so far the the more the chances are that a break will be sustained so what do i expect you know if we're going higher if we're going higher, I expect the month probably to close around here and then one or two months closing somewhere near the top of the Bollinger Band and that gives us trend. So still 2864 uh, to the highs, 3030, probably for some more, uh, for quite some time. If we uh, look at the weeklies, that is you know this is about as trendless as we can get right uh, look at the Bollinger Bands finally these uh, are very supportive from uh, from underneath we are closing these Bollinger Bands 2864 if that doesn't give way that in a couple of weeks time these moving averages and Bollinger Bands are going to be there and only then are we going to have to start getting some impulsion up over 3,000. Uh, if we have a look at a daily, same thing. You can see how the Bollinger Bands are now contracting several days of going sideways before we can decide to make a move. But we are in such a shallow uptrend. You can see this exceedingly shallow uptrend. Uh, the 200 day moving average now, you know, coming up to the 2864 level. Uh, this is all very much uh, the stuff that says low volatility. Why low volatility? Well, because the driver NQ is in a low volatility environment. 7,788, whatever it is, the swing level broken, market goes up, comes right back. Um, this is going to be very good support now. Uh, you know, a few days trading sideways and then maybe we go up to 8,000. Uh, but this is still a low volatility environment. If you have a look, we have been here since early, early uh, summer. So it, it's, you know, what to say. Uh, volatility is still mispriced. And this is the chart of volatility. Uh, you can see that every time it drops below 1627 and stays there, eventually trades down towards 12%. And this is exactly what I'm expecting it to do this time. Um, there is no reason for volatility to do this bid. This period here was when uh, the, uh, the market was basically hedging itself with options, and now they're all hedged. Uh, so I don't see where the demand for volatility is going to come from. The 200 day moving average is still pointed downwards. These moving averages here are now beginning to point downwards. Uh, if we enlarge that, you know, what's bullish about this? Every time it gets anywhere near 20, it's a sell. And down here towards the 12 area, it's a buy. Uh, I would not be surprised to see volatility 4% lower over the course of the next couple of months with the market having gone absolutely nowhere on the upside or the downside. Well, if the US market is handicapped by low volatility, uh, earnings, uh, worries, uh, election worries for next year, uh, the Warren factor, 
if we are really worried about all kinds of other things uh, like is the Fed going to cut and how much and when, is it time to look at other markets for uh, for impetus as opposed to the US? I mean, for such a long time, everybody has been buying US blindly. Uh, I would argue that Europe is getting to be very interesting. Every time we get to this 11,865 area, it's very good support. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six weeks within that area. And now we're beginning to bust through. It, you can see how different this chart is beginning to look actually from the weekly SPX chart, which I showed you there. You know, the, uh, the area around 3,030 and 3,060 is, is absolutely solid. Well, here we can go up all the way to 12,700 and, you know, probably 12,800 next week uh, without any bother. So maybe it is time really to start getting on board of DAX dips as opposed to SPX dips. And I also want to show you a chart, a weekly chart of the Nikkei. It's very obvious to me that as long as we stay above these, uh, this congregation here of moving averages, the impetus is to the upside. We are only now just beginning to open the weekly Bollinger Bands. 23,005 is a very important level. Uh, I think that within two or three weeks we'll be able to take out this 22,500 area and then trade 23,000 very quickly. Within a month, that's why I expect the market to be as long as it can uh, withhold 21,200 up to 21,350. This area holds for the next two or three weeks, I think the Nikkei is going to have a very good end to the year. And so on to the biases. Here are all the levels in twos, fives and tens that I talked about and why they're important. 169 I think is going to be very key in the two year and somewhere to do uh, a lot of uh, options. Minus 40 for the Bund. Between minus 40 and minus 26 is a, is, is a very, very important area. SPX, I told you what there is, NQ, these are the levels, but I think the impulsion in this sector is very low and that, to me, will drive the VIX down towards the 12% area sometimes this year. This is the area that I really like, the Nikkei 21,300, and I'm also beginning to like the DAX far more. Uh, I think these two are going to probably uh, take over leadership for a while from the SPX while well, that takes a well-earned rest because of all the different worries. DXY, you know, I, I the one I like, uh, I don't like it at the moment for the next couple of weeks simply because I think Sterling is going to play massive games with Euro USD because of the uh, Euro GBP cross. But if we get towards the 9720 area, I will be a very interested buyer of calls in DXY. Thank you very much indeed and tweet you on Monday.